Hello and welcome to the Dreaming Druid Tarot Channel. I am your host, Charity Rose, also known as the Dreaming Druid, and I'm really excited to bring you this wonderful card reading for all of my earth signs. So uh, feel free to listen to the whole thing because there are going to be messages for you in here. The way that I structured this, this particular card reading is when I drew the cards, I felt very much like the first pile will be for Taurus and then the middle pile will be for Virgo and then the last pile will be for Capricorn. And then I drew some tarot cards and oracle cards for the all the earth signs. So I have a feeling that you most likely will resonate with your specific sign that you're looking for. But the fact that this setup seems very encompassed, I feel that it's it would be worth listening to the whole video just to get all of the messages because the ones that are for sign specifics possibly will be for that specific sign, but the, a message might be in there for you too. So I would take a listen to all of them just as earth sign information in general, but these specific messages in these three separate piles will be for more poignantly to that specific earth sign. So, um, I also felt different this time when I was drawing the cards because I felt called to leave the bottom of the deck energy around. And I think it's because these are messages that you also need to hear or at least see. And what we have here is the nurture card over here. And then we also have the strength card and the phoenix card, which is also known as the world card. It is a card of transformation. So already I feel just an extremely powerful message coming out for you, earth signs. I'm going to refer to most of this reading as earth signs, unless I'm talking about you, a sign specific. But just remember, like I said, that even if it's not your sign specifically, there could still be very important messages in there for you as well. That is what I'm feeling very strongly to share with you. And of course, this is a tarot card reading uh, for entertainment purposes only. Also, if something does not resonate with you, that's okay, because this is technically a general reading, albeit for earth signs specifically. So don't feel bad if something doesn't really quite fit with your story. And another thing to think about is also how you're interpreting that story. Maybe it's not applying to the specific example that I'm using, but maybe the energy is carrying over into other aspects of your life. So something to take in mind, something to take into consideration while you're listening to this reading. I hope that this brings you further clarity, enlightenment, and hopefully um, a sense of of en enlivening um, and also soothing to the soul you know like a like a, a healing balm over the soul is is what i feel like i need to say and at the very end of this whole reading what we'll do is i will draw a stone for each sign at the very end just to see what uh would serve you the best for this chunk of time i suppose all right, let's go ahead and get started, okay? I am super excited to see what the overarching energy is for all of my earth signs, and we're gonna reveal that here with these cards. So the first one is learning. I just got a feeling that this is a card you've been doing, you've been learning, you've been growing, you've been allowing yourself curiosity is what I want to say. Um, take a look at this card. This is an adorable child observing a ladybug on a little piece of plant, wheat plant or grass seed. And it, there are butterflies all around. So to me, I'm already hearing transformation and I see the bee here, which is hardworking. And so it's a very green and abundant card. So not only maybe 
in the spring months, there will be a lot of learning happening or maybe something to do with learning. I also heard wrapping up learning. So for those that are in school, you might be finishing school or something is coming to a close for some of you. And that's kind of a weird message because this is the card of learning, but that's the feeling I get is very much about taking in the world around you in a curious manner and learning new skills, learning new talents, new, uh, I just heard new way of life. Like this is about having that inner child, that childlike curiosity and childlike is much different than childish. I think we all know the feeling that one feels sticky, one feels expansive. So not, this is not a time to be childish. This is a time to be childlike in allowing yourself to open your heart and see the world around you with curious eyes. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and reveal the rest of these cards here. So we have the, the dragon oracle card is the card of grace. Wow. I absolutely love this color palette. It's like dark purple, black, and blues with some of that lighter pastel space type look. I'm just a sucker for anything space related. <laughs> I love that. And then the next card is Cycles. N another beautiful card with more butterflies, might I add. And then your tarot card is the Wheel of Fortune. Wow. <laughs> Taurus, I don't think it gets any more powerful than this, to be honest with you. So what I'm seeing here is you've been on a path of learning. This is a time to learn. It's a time to continuously learn. It's a, a time to recognize that opening yourself up to your inner child and remembering what it felt like to be curious, to want to explore and learn new skills and new things. I keep hearing homemaker in my head. So some of you might be indulging yourself in learning new skills that would improve the home or the family life or just the cozy feeling of of what it takes to make a house into a home. What does that mean for you, Taurus? And learning the skills that it takes to feel cozy in your own home. I said Taurus. Obviously, there, there's a message there for homemaking for Taurus, even though this whole reading is for Earth signs. So this is just in general for Earth signs. I feel like you have been, some of you have been on the path, a lot of you have been on the path of learning already, or you've had to learn new skills. But notice this isn't saying uh, learned, it's learning, which is a continuous verb action word. So having this curious mindset about you is going to help with this transition that I feel like you're entering. You're entering this time of change um, because you have not only the wheel of fortune down right here, but cycles. Okay. <laughs> and the fact that on the bottom of the deck energy is the Phoenix card, which is about transformations. Transformations also are very indicative of the nature of butterflies. Butterflies are the end result of a major transformation for the caterpillar. So I feel that you are growing from caterpillar to butterfly there's something shifting in your life that is causing a transformation some of you this might be internal only and and more on a subtle level but i feel like a lot of you are experiencing this on the external in large capacities in large ways and the energy that i'm getting with this whole reading is it's not necessarily it's not very it's not harsh energy it's not like a harsh transition, like death and divorce. I'm not seeing any like that kind of thing. Although that is of course a possibility with just, if you're alive, then of course it's always a possibility. But what I'm seeing is this is a personal transformation. This is happening in your mind and in your heart. And this is why I feel that on the bottom of the deck energy for the healing cards, you have nurture as well, because what is required of you to be able to gracefully go through this transformation is 
to do what is necessary to nurture yourself because that is going to give you the strength to take you onto this new path. You are the Phoenix rising. So that means that some things are going to have to burn down to ash and out of the nutrient dense ash that the Phoenix leaves behind after its life cycle is burnt up is new beginnings new things being born, new, this could, I heard baby for some of you. So, uh, if you're not looking to get pregnant, be careful. <laughs> um, because right now is an extremely fertile time for you. This is a time of change and tra transition for the sake of growth. The fact that the learning card is literally so absolutely full of lush greenery is just magnificent absolutely magnificent i just absolutely love this energy this is like where i want to live <laughs> this is where i want to be all the time it's just deep in the nature and the and the grasses just with a free open mind allowing light and love and the healing ability of nature to come in. I'm seeing water in the background here and there's also water here. So this is about also learning more about who you are on an emotional level. Who are you on an emotional level? Learning your strengths and your weaknesses and then working with that rather than beating yourself up for your weaknesses, understanding these weaknesses and then moving through them with grace. That's why I feel the grace card is here. The, and the thing I love about the dragon cards just specifically, um, which these are a new addition to my collection and I absolutely love them. Uh, shout out to my mom for getting them for me for Christmas. <laughs> um, the grace. So the thing about dragons is their energy is big. They are like cosmic beings in the universe so their energy is like overarching so the fact that the grace dragon is here is like overarching energy over this entire message that i'm delivering to you earth signs and if i keep calling you taurus i apologize i'm i mean earth signs i haven't gotten into the specific ones yet so earth signs the overarching energy over every message that i'm giving today in this reading is to to move with grace into this new beginning and how you're going to be able to do that is by this open childlike curiosity in learning which is a uh, a, a, a present tense verb <laughs> um about so many things literally anything anything this there's so many things this child could be learning and they and they're observing the behavior of this tiny little bug so it's like whatever you whatever your attention is drawn to have a curious open mind about it and learn about it um, your emotions definitely being one of them this is why there's these water elements here you know and the fact that i love how this one here let me bring it closer so you can see this one right here in the nurture card she's got this water pouring out of her mind and flowing into the earth, basically creating the earth. And so to me, this is like bringing clarity to your mind through the action of open curiosity and learning, which is causing this change, this, 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 it's, it's graceful. It's a very graceful way to approach newness in your life. Of course, our human instincts for survival on a physical level is very fear-based, which is, you know, are, do you feel safe? Do you feel secure? And I feel like earth signs, you have the best ability to feel safe and secure in the three-dimensional reality, the here and now. So in that regards, it's, it's time to graduate from that level and ask yourself, do you feel safe and secure in your own mind? Do you feel safe and secure in your own emotions? Those are the areas, if you're like, mm, I don't know, or you are just disconnect with it, disconnected with it so you really don't know, then that is the area in which to learn to grow. I feel like a lot of you, I just heard, are growing your money. Uh, whether you realize it or not, you are growing your money. And this is also done through learning new skill sets. Uh, uh, 
being able to balance your mind and your emotions with your heart, because I'm seeing a lot of green here, but yet this is also a, a card of the mind. Um, it's very much causing you to inevitably grow your money as well. The flow of currency, the flow of abundance is what I'm seeing here. You're moving into a cycle of abundance and this is how you make it happen. If you're unsure, this is how you make it happen. If you're going, if you know you're, you're going through a big change or you're about to, this is how to handle it uh, well. Okay, I there are words here on the bottom of this cycles card here I want to read. Everything has its right time. Honor the cycles of your body. Tune into the moon's magic. Wow. So another card about, I would say that is a card of nurturing as well. So this is really, I'm hearing care for the vessel. Take care of the vessel because you're going to need it. You're, you're not here to just wither away and die. You need to take care of your body. Um, I hear a uh, ringing in my right ear. So I think that's really an important message is taking care of your body. Your body is a vessel for your conscious energy, for your heart, for your gifts, for your curious, amazing mind. You need to have a healthy vessel, a healthy vessel to carry you on this planet as we go through life so this is definitely a call to those who are hearing me to take care of your body if they, if if this means you need to stretch more stretch if you need to eat healthier foods go ahead if you need to eat more food or less food or um exercising or moving your body in ways that feel good, like maybe daily walks or things like that. Also getting enough sleep, learning new things is also an extremely good way to uh, keep yourself healthy in your mind. So if it's been a while since you've learned a new skill or have done something new or fresh, that this is, this is your sign. <laughs> this is your calling. The fact, I, I just love how there's just, the, I just feel this transformation in this cycle. And it really is in a positive direction. And anything that would be sticky, this is why this reading is the way it is. Because earth signs, if there's anything that you're going through that feels sticky or scary, just fall, fall back on taking care of your body, nurturing. That is the basic first place to start if you're unsure about anything is how can I take care of my body better and then actually doing it. This is going to cause you to be able to move through these cycles with more grace and with the strength to be able to get it done and make it happen. Okay. So <laughs> earth signs, this is very powerful right now. This is a very potent time for you. The wheel of fortune for those that don't know tarot very well, because I know some of you that watch these readings do tarot yourselves, but there are some, there are plenty of you out there that don't. And that's why you come to me, which I'm honored by the way. Thank you for spending your time with me to receive these messages. But the wheel of fortune, um, is a card of karma, I guess you could say. So the wheel of time turns regardless of uh, whether we go gracefully or if we go kicking and screaming. So, um, and how you end up on the other side of this transformation or this turning of the wheel per se in life, it's up to you to determine where you land on the other side. That's why it's called, I call it the wheel of karma as well, because what karma is to me, and I, I don't want to get too deep into this because I could make a whole video just about that topic, but what karma is, is what you put out into the world is what you receive, but on all levels. So if you are giving to the poor, but with the intention of, evil or I mean, you know, like, or selfish gains. I mean, there's, the, there's, of course, the philosophical question of is there anything that is truly altruistic, but we're, like I said, not going to get into that. It's more of, you know, it's like, think about the people that go to church to make themselves feel better or make themselves look good. But it's, it's, and it's not about learning or growing 
uh, or connecting to spirit at all, then, you know, so there are ways you can do positive actions with negative intentions. So that's where karma comes in is karma sees all karma is literally just, it's like a law of the universe. It's for every action, there is a reaction. And sometimes we get to see that firsthand and sometimes not, you know, sometimes it takes time for karma to reveal itself. So this is saying, asking you, this card is asking you to choose wisely your actions because they all have consequences. So now is the time to put money in the piggy bank of good karma or clearing karma because having no karma is the best way. I feel like no karma, you know which is good karma in my opinion. So that would be things like, you know, what do you think the karma karmic reaction is going to be if you choose to nurture yourself by eating healthy, good dinners and getting a good night's sleep, or if you go out drinking and playing video games all night long, there's going to be, you know, there is a going to be a consequence for those actions. And it's like, what price are you willing to pay um, and some of the actions that we take, we can't see the karmic outcomes, but this is why it's asking you to pay attention to the energy that you're putting out into your body and into the world and into the people around you because karma, the, the wheel is turning and uh, karma is about to, pay, you know, collect. So hopefully you put good karma in or at least uh, released karma, which you can do that through healing um, making amends, uh, changing toxic behavior, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, I'm not going to go too far into this, but that is why this card is here. And the fact that this is a major arcana means that it's overarching energy, very similar to the dragon cards, just overarching energy, big energy. This is like a universal, this is a universe shift for you. This isn't just some like day to day, you know, minutiae, nonsense with the like how the minor arcana is where it's very uh usually temporary or it's like the short term or kind of more frivolous in its um importance the the major arcana are called major for a reason because they're big they like i said encompass big energy so yeah the fact that you have cycles and the wheel of fortune which is about cycles that this card is asking you, the cycles card is asking you to nurture yourself, that the nurture card is asking you to cleanse your mind. And then the learning card is here about in, like enhancing the way that you approach life um, and keeping that within the bounds of grace. And so, and then through doing that, you are granted the strength needed to have this major transformation because it's happening it's happening it's happening earth signs whether you want to admit it or not it's happening so you might as well get on the train get on track uh go with the flow with this energy um don't go kicking and screaming go gracefully so that means admitting to yourself the areas that you need imp to improve and then have that open curious mind in learning how to release that karma or nurture yourself and gain better like fresh positive karma because yeah you're going through a transformation right now it's big it's big okay so this is for the uh, overarching theme for all earth signs now i'm going to get into the more specific messages for the this first pile is Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. But like I said in the beginning of the video, to watch all of this section because there are going to be messages for you. So it's still like a general earth sign reading, but this is like, okay, for you specifically, this is what you could be potentially dealing with and whatnot. So, um, okay, let's get into it. So let's start with Taurus. Let me put these cards up here. There, they can share space. Okay. All right, let's see what we've got for Taurus. Taurus, wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Literally, it's a repeat. Okay, Taurus, it's a repeat. You have the wheel, okay? That is the, the same card as this, by the way. It's the same card as the Wheel of Fortune, just from a different deck. Uh, <laughs> so yes, 
This is a perfect, I love this depiction on this card though, because it explains what's going on. It's, um, and okay, I just got interrupted with um, something to do with Spanish speaking or uh, Hispanic speaking or Mexican or something like that. Like that's uh, for some of you a, a sign of like either you're learning Spanish or you know someone who's Spanish or there's somebody who is, and, and I say Spanish, I mean, I should say um, Hispanic. Uh, you know somebody who's Hispanic, you know, or you're learning, um, you're learning the Hispanic language, or there's somebody of Hispanic origin that you know or need to connect with, uh, some, but something with, um, with Mexico or Spain, uh, or Hispanic, which is South America, something, something to do with that. Um, I feel like talking and language, like you need to talk to this person if you know anybody like this, or maybe you're learning a language or, or you need to learn that language. So, uh, anyway, that was a, sometimes spirit comes in and just like, bam, give this message. Like, okay. All right. Back on track here. So the wheel, this card is showing you the balance that it requires. See the light and the dark, and she's not shunning any of it. She's working with it in a balanced manner. And, um, I just love this. She's got those lucky dice that you hang up in like cool classic cars, you know, the fuzzy dice or whatever. She's wearing it around her neck. And I just heard from that, good luck. This is giving you good luck to be aware of how karma affects you, that you're moving into a new cycle and to set yourself up for su success. And, and that is how you get luck. Like you can't rely on luck too much and you can actually cultivate luck. You can cultivate luck by putting yourself out there, by being prepared, by learning what you need to learn by looking into it, by doing research, by bringing into balance these sides, by letting go and releasing toxicity, by doing these things, you are actually making room for luck to come in and serve you on this, this journey. So finding that balance, not shunning the darkness, not shunning the light, but creating balance with it. Because if you are a human on planet earth, which I guarantee you, 99.99% .99 of you watching this are probably human. <laughs> I don't know what I'm leaving like the 001% for, but <laughs> anyway, um, it's life has both is got good stuff and it's got bad stuff. It's got things you like, things you don't like. It's just part of being alive. So instead of shunning the things you don't like so heavily, see what you can do to work with it. Okay. See what you can do to work with it. So I'll give you an example for me, the news, watching the news and getting, staying connected with all the political BS that's happening in the world right now. It, it doesn't feel good to me. I don't like it. I really don't. I think this whole system is broken and needs to go bye-bye anyways. So like, I, you know, it's, so how I balance that out is I will take in the information only and then walk away once I have the information. So if there are people who need to talk about politics or whatever, I will listen to the uh, points that will get, I will listen to their talking points that will give me information. But as soon as I feel my emotions getting wrapped up into it, I walk away because it's like, nope. Um, you know, so I, I do my best to stay absolutely neutral when it comes to experiencing the news because you really just don't know. It's all so opinion, heavily opinionated um, and skewed from the truth that we don't even know the truth. So to pretend that we know what's going on to me it seems foolish, but I'm not going to like freak out anytime anybody wants to like talk politics or news. Like I can have patience with that, but I have my own boundaries with it. So that's like the way, a way to handle the darkness is to like, you really do have to have boundaries around it. You can't totally obliterate it from your life because we're humans living on planet earth. Um, so that that's a way to like create balance and everything like that. So yeah, your money is moving forward. Your money is increasing your karmic a cycle and wheel is turning for the better. I feel like you've dealt with a lot of karmic cycles. Like you've dealt with a lot of stuff that is like 
trauma passed from hereditary. Like it's hereditary. I feel like some of it is like genetics, hereditary, or like passed on trauma, generational trauma. That's what I was trying to think of. It's like what you're dealing with is generational trauma. And I feel like some of you have had to deal with this generational trauma, like physically manifesting in your body. And so like that sucks because it's like, you didn't have, to, you you were born, like you, you didn't choose this. It just happened to you. So this is saying like, how are you going to handle it? Are you gonna handle it with grace? Are you going to balance yourself out in the way that you need through nurturing yourself? and learning new things like focus on the things you can do rather than the things you can't do so growing your money is one of them i think t taurus you have a talent to grow money more than a lot of signs well the earth signs just in general can grow their money quickly but it's like taurus i feel like your money game your money game is on point and just to keep doing what you're doing especially when it's in regards to the general message like learning new things growing and moving forward in a, in the oncoming cycle change with grace so the card underneath it is the leo minor card and um this is about budding talent and a person in training so it's i also saw this like literally as the same card as the strength card here like another lion card so some of you may be connecting with um a fire sign whether it's a Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius, uh, or a combination, but I feel like connecting with fire signs is really going to help you right now just feel that vitality and that ability to like say yes to life with a roar. And you may be, this may be new territory for you that you're exploring here, Taurus. The budding talent and person in training is like, you may not be like perfect at it yet, or you might just be at the very beginnings of something, but it's worthwhile. It's worth taking the time and the effort. It's worth having the courage and the strength to move forward in that. Um, just the fact that the we you have it paired with the wheel is like, yes, this is big yes, yes, yes energy for you to move forward with power and with strength and with conviction and with knowing that you've got this, Taurus. You have this in the bag, okay? So that's what I have for you, Taurus. Um, now, before I move on to the next sign, I'm going to get a stone for you out of my lovely Christmas box. I'll show you Christmas box. It's got a bunch of rocks in it. So we're gonna pick one without looking. Hopefully this rushling around isn't too loud for you. Okay, I have two in my hands. Uh, okay, I guess you get two stones. Let's see what they are. I had to put that down. Oh my goodness, look what you got. Ooh, you got the little saguaro stone and then you've got the honey calcite, honeycomb calcite to be specific. So funny thing, um, so this little saguaro stone is a stone that I painted and I actually plucked this little stone from the saguaro desert in Arizona. And that's why I felt inspired to paint this little saguaro, this saguaro cactus on it. And then funny thing, um, while I was in Arizona, I was in the Tucson Gems show, I actually bought these. This was the first stone that I actually bought in out of the whole Gems show, which was you know, they shut, they, they don't shut down the whole town, but like the whole city is involved in this gem show. So there's tons and tons and tons, literal tons of rocks. And this is literally the first rock that I bought in Arizona is this honeycomb calcite. It is actually very specific to uh, Utah. There's only one mine in Utah that gets this specific type of calcite. Now there is honey calcite, but this is honeycomb calcite and it actually is different. It's food grade. So you can actually like make uh, plateware out of it or cutting boards out of it if you want to. I just think it looks so delicious. I wonder if my camera is focusing on it. So delicious. It looks like a piece of candy. I keep hearing lemon zest, uh, yellow, foods that are yellow. 
um, adding more acidity to your food, like lemon zest. I keep hearing lemon, lemon zest, maybe lemon cookies or something. Also, I keep hearing um, if you are needing to go on a vacation or needing to get out of uh, wherever you live, going to the desert. Uh, going to the desert, Arizona and Utah. You literally have a stone from Arizona and a stone from Utah. And those two places, I always see them as deserts. Um, so it's time to like go visit Utah or Arizona for some of you. Maybe you have family in Arizona or Utah. That's important. But um, that's what I'm getting for these stones. Uh, also, the saguaro is like, a sac it's a sacred spiritual plant that the natives of that area deem as uh the saguaros they actually believe that they house the spirits of their ancestors that have passed on so the reason why they the saguaro is sacred is because it literally is like a spiritual house for their ancestors so it's like if you would throw a piece of trash in the desert then you're throwing trash on your ancestors <laughs> so like they take it very seriously like you will go to jail if you are seen damaging a saguaro by the way so like they're a sacred plant and very spiritually based and then the honeycomb calcite is very much about like clean healthy living purity energy a uh, cleansing, big time cleansing, cleansing, cleansing. That's probably why I'm seeing like lemony lemon stuff coming out. Plus the color, you know, um, very much a stone of energizing the body, energizing the self, energizing digestion, aiding in di digestion. I feel like some of you need to help with that. Also, <laughs> um, uh, what was the other thing cleansing the body just like the cleansing the kidneys the liver especially in the kidneys kidneys and liver need to be cleansed just it's time to like cleanse the body um, and the energetic field as well uh, this is definitely one that it moves stagnant energy out of the body and also out of a room so for those of you who have like corners of your house that feel kind of dead or like areas of your house you're uncomfortable with or areas in like a bedroom or wherever that just kind of feels like stale add a piece of calcite honeycomb calcite uh, would of course be even better but any calcite actually does that for you so that is so freaking cool i love that taurus way to go picking out some good ones okay now it's time to get into virgo oops i just bumped the camera okay virgo let's see what cards you've got Oh, oh, <laughs> you have the Knight of Cups. What the heck? Okay, so I'm going to actually leave this reversed. So the Knight of Cups, look at this sexy MF. Wow, he's got the blanket out. He's got like grapes, wine, cheese, a baguette, a bowl, because he's here to offer you something, and a love letter. Also, um, I love how he's like an urban cowboy. So he's got a horse in the background. So he's very good with animals, I want to say. And he's got this like bouquet of roses. So uh, Virgo, you have somebody in your life that is here to offer love to you. They are here to you. This could be a water sign for some of you. It could be a male for some of you or female. Um, it is the Knight of Cups, which could embody both masculine and feminine energy. But obviously there's a dude on here. So I'm going to like lean a little more towards that. Um, also, I see tiny little wings on his shoes. So there's a message of love coming in for you. Um, for some of you who <laughs> I can hear some of you saying, why well, don't I ain't got nobody in my life. <laughs> So what the hell is this card coming out here for? Well, this could be literally um, your inner self or your spirit guides or some some internal shift of opening up to love or just like loving yourself more, self-love, self super important. Um, what does it mean? Here's a question I have for you, Virgo, is what does it mean? What does a romantic gesture mean? And how would you go about giving a romantic gesture to yourself and or to somebody you love. I always think it's fun to like do romantic gestures for ourselves, which to me is literally just another way to say nurture, self-nurturing, self-love. Yep, that's cool. <laughs> so, but there, I really feel like for a lot of you, there's like a person 
that's in your life, Virgo, that wants to give to you. And it's like, are you open to receive? Are you open to receive? That's the question that I keep wondering is, um, also there's could be a change in love. The fact that the whole overarching energy is about a shift or a transformation. I feel like there's a shift in transformation like happening or about to happen in your love life, in your relationships. The Knight of Cups is literally a knight in shining armor. It's literally the knight riding in on a white horse to save you. So, but the fact that he's like, gotten off his horse and has dedicated his time and attention to you, Virgo. Super cool. <laughs> I love also that he didn't tie down his horse at all. It's kind of like free to roam. And um, it's like very just magical, this feeling of just this wooing energy. Uh, I also heard be careful of rose colored glasses. So looking at things being too like don't basically don't get your hopes up too high have hope but be realistic is the message i'm getting because the knight of cups his downside which this isn't reversed by the way so this is in its positive aspect but i always feel it's very important to inform the you know inform you of the potential negative side of the knight of cups would be like uh, a daydreamer or somebody who has grand ideas but never actually follows through with them or ha like basically has over expectations like oh it's going to be so great and everything's going to be amazing and then when it, it turns out to be okay but not what you expected per, per se then it kind of can leave room for disappointment and hurt so be careful with that i think that's part of the reason why the the uh general overarching earth sign message at the beginning of this video was very much about like nurturing the self learning you know learning and releasing karma into a new cycle with grace is that is that in and of itself taking care of yourself continuing to grow and learn in the areas that you need to learn and grow and i know you know what those are that is going to help keep you grounded and realistic in this new beginning of of love and nurturing so i think you know have that hope and have that love and have that ecstatic energy but just keep it grounded a little bit you know so that you don't get hurt you know per se because think about it when you're riding a horse think about an, a knight they have to ride they're riding horses you can't be all too daydreamy while you're riding a horse even though it's a very magical experience you have to stay present, aware, and grounded to stay safe, basically. That's just like a default, you know, for for uh, handling situations like that. So the other card that you got underneath this to kind of clarify what's going on is the Canis Minor, but it's also reversed. So this card, I love the art on it. It's so goofy. Um, it says, underdog, overlooked talents, unglorified action. I feel like this is coming to an end. That's why it's reversed. So some cards are actually like really awesome to see reversed. Um, I just want to touch on Taurus's reading here for a second because they got the Leo minor and you got the Canis minor. So you, there's two minor cards popping up in, in uh, the earth sign readings, you being one of them. I feel like that's you and that's why this card is reversed because you know there's only one of these cards in the deck and it came out for Taurus, but this is like the next best thing for giving you the same message, Virgo, is uh, yeah, you are somebody who is budding talent. You are a person in training. You are learning and growing and leveling up to the next level. I feel like Virgo, your reading is more focused on, on growing that talent, growing that skill, that, that ability, growing that ability to, so that you can open up to love. You are opening up to love and this is causing this reaction within your life that's causing this growth to happen. So yes, you are becoming the top dog now in your life. You're becoming main character energy, Virgo, okay? You're not the underdog anymore. You don't have to take that you don't have to take that 
bull crap anymore, okay? Like this is what I feel like things are shifting. You know, this is probably why I have the gr stay grounded. Like I keep getting the message of staying grounded through continuing to learn, grow and take care of yourself and self nurture in the way that you need to because a transformation is happening to you. So it's about staying balanced and moving through grace in this time of tra change. And the way to do that is to stay grounded because I feel like you're going to have a ton to celebrate. Okay. You're going to have a ton to celebrate Virgo, um, because you're no longer going to be the underdog anymore. You're not going to be overlooked anymore. Like I said, budding talent, you got the same message at, in that regards as Taurus budding talent. You are somebody in training. You are learning, you're growing, you're gaining new skills and abilities. Okay. So unglorified action. That's another thing is like some things in life are not as glamorous, but they get the job done. And I feel like that's you, Virgo. You've been doing that. You haven't been looking to you know, be the, the best or do things with absolute perfection or grace. Although I feel like that is absolutely what Virgo would want. Um, you've just been trying your, doing your best just to get the job done. And it's a bit unglorified, you know, and also the fact that I feel like you've been missing out on getting your, your credit. You haven't been getting the credit you deserve Virgo. And that is all changing and it's all connected to this love card. Okay. Like it's opening you up to new passion, new loves, new things to enjoy in life, new people to enjoy in life, a new way to enjoy life is coming to you, Virgo. That is absolutely magnificent. What a beautiful message for you, Virgo. Okay, now let's go ahead and pull out a stone for you that's going to serve you for this, you know, for whenever you watch this reading. It's in my wonderful Christmas box. So Christmas wish box. Let's go ahead and make a wish as I grab a stone for you. All right, stone for Virgo. And we got it. Oh, interesting. Okay. You have, my lovely Virgos, fluorite. See if I can get the camera to focus on it. This is quite a lovely piece of fluorite. This camera angle and lighting isn't really doing it justice, but it has bands of purple, green, blue, and it's like whoop, slippery, a little bit slippery. And it's got this wonderful clearness to it and this whole like matrix happening on the inside. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. So yeah, gorgeous stone. This stone is about literally learning. Okay. So I feel like I just heard Virgo, you are on the precipice of learning some really great new skills that are going to open your life up in the grandest way. You don't even know. And to help you absorb this information, whether it's, whether it's just, you've decided to uh, whether you're in high school and you're finishing high school, whether you're going to college or you're going back to college, whether you're learning a specific life skill, whether you're taking a class, whether you're reading a certain type of book that you're learning, or maybe you're, it's a new job that you're learning, or you're learning more about a specific type of job that you already have. Maybe you got promoted for some of you or whatever. This is going to help you absorb and assimilate that knowledge. Like, you know, those people in school that just like memorize things so easily. I always got so annoyed because it's like I had to work like twice as hard to remember and then regurgitate that information than those people. But the difference between being able to memorize stuff and then actually being able to, uh, have the knowledge and understand its application are two different things. So starting off with memorizing things is okay, but then you have to actually be able to implement the stuff that you've memorized. Like what does it actually mean? What is the context of the stuff that you're learning? So being able to put what you're learning into context is going to be really important. And this stone is very good for organization. It's really good for people who have ADD. 
it's really good for, um, and this is not, don't eat the stone, just put it in your pocket. <laughs> so yeah, it's very good for organization. Uh, people with ADD, people who need to stay focused, people who have a problem procrastinating, people who need help with motivation, people who tend to be a bit forgetful or have memory issues. This stone is here to help you. This is the stone that I carry around with me when I need to remember some important stuff, you know, or I need to get some stuff done, or I need to have an organized structured day in order to get everything done basically. So I feel like Virgo, um, when you're in the middle of learning something new or you're nervous about learning something new, but you need to get a piece of this fluorite. This is rainbow fluorite to be specific, but any fluorite will do. Um, very important for, this is the stone for the brain for sure. Okay. Also really good for bringing clarity of thought and clarity in speech as well. So perfect little stone for you. I find it grand that you got it on top of this whole like learning and budding talent and not being the underdog anymore, but needing to stay grounded. And it's like, you're learning a new skill set. Your, your reading feels very, like you're very much in the knowledge base. Like you're learning a new skill. Like you're, you've, you've got something that you, that you're either have learned or are learning and are that's, that's like the fundamental shift that's happening in your life. Um, so stay grounded and be open to love. Um, and, keep, keep on getting it, Virgo. <laughs> Your guys, you guys are badasses. I have a full faith in everything that you do. Okay. All right. Now for the final, uh, earth sign, we have ourselves the lovely Capricorns. Let's see what you got. Oh my goodness. Wow. What powerful cards are coming out this time. You have the queen of pentacles. Look at this woman. Look at her. Just look at her. She is the epitome of, re of assurance, of confidence, of cool, calm, and collected. This woman knows what she has. This woman knows what she's about. I love how she's sitting on like a papasan chair um, in the middle of the forest. She just looks so content and at ease with her life and her money. She has not very many pentacles. She only has one, but it's a big one and it's shiny. And she knows that she's got it and she knows what to do with it and how to go about giving and receiving in a balanced way. That's the thing about the queen of pentacles is the queen of pentacles. I feel like is you. Um, this is definitely more of a feminine energy, but it can embody masculine energy. Um, so this could either be you or a woman that you know in life. But I feel like this is talking about you, Capricorn. You are the queen of pentacles or you have the ability to be the queen of pentacles. If you feel a bit wonky with your money recently or it just feels unstable, this is the universe asking you to step into your full power. Really look at what you have and then look at what you can do with what you have and not allowing you um, a negative abundance mindset. You need a full, positive, abundant mindset. The queen of pentacles isn't looking at and worry. She's not looking down at her pentacle, pentacle worried about it. She says, I know what I have. I know what I have and I know how to work with what I've got. I know how to work with what I've got. And she rests in that comfort, in that self-assurance. And guess what, Capricorn? Doing that actually will help grow your money. If you want more pentacles, you're like, well, I want more than just one pentacle. I can't really do much with that. I feel like, so what if I'm confident in my ability to uh, be resourceful? Because that is what the queen of pentacles is all about. Is She is extremely resourceful. She is the most resourceful. That is a huge talent you have, Capricorn, is you are resourceful, so resourceful, the, probably the most resourceful, to be honest with you. But some of you I hear say, well, I want more than just one pentacle. Well, that's absolutely true, but you're going to have to start with being resourceful and then doing that with joyness in your heart, gladness in your heart, positivity in your heart, feeling the abundance. Look around her. She is surrounded by nothing but greenery, very much similar to the 
um, the learning card. So this is about learning new skills, talents, and abilities, investing in yourself. That's what the Queen of Pentacles is also about, is she invests in herself because she knows that if she invests in herself, she will be able to serve her people better. So she doesn't get caught up in the she doesn't get caught up in, oh, well, is it selfish and blah, blah, blah. Like, no, she understands the balance of give and take, okay? She is the queen of balance between give and take because she knows that if she invests in herself, she's just going to turn around and give it to her people anyways. But doing it in a balanced, self-assured way brings such calm, stable energy. And money likes to live where there's calm and stability. You know, money doesn't like to be chased off with uh, being frivolous or flighty. You know, money likes to be stable. So you yourself must embody that energy of stability. Okay, let's see what the other card has to say. This one is the Earth King. Wow, so you have the Earth Queen from this de deck and the Earth King from this deck. Um, this is, forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, it's um, Auriga. So this is long hours, complex work, earned accomplishments, and it's reversed. So to me, what that is saying is, uh, I feel like that's kind of what's holding you back is the fear of long hours, fear of uh, complex work and uh and uh, not necessarily fear of earned accomplishment, but the fact that it's like hard to see how, it's hard to recognize your accomplishments sometimes because you're, I just heard on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. Um, flighty or a bit bullheaded. Um, like think of a goat, they chew on everything. They climb on everything. They destroy everything. They're actually, uh, <laughs> they're, they're cute and they give milk and they give meat, but Damn it if they aren't destructive as hell. So this is why this is reversed is because um, you can have this fear, worry, and doubt be destructive in your in your life. And, and because of that, it's hard to recognize your earned accomplishments. You've earned quite a few accomplishments, Capricorn. Remind yourself of those. Give yourself uh, some, I just heard slack, a break. Give yourself a break. Give yourself some slack. Realize that it you're going to be able to handle whatever it is that's coming your way. The fact that this whole, the overarching message is about cycles, getting on positive karmic, the positive karmic wheel of cycles because you're going to be spit out the other side whether you like it or not. So you might as well take care of yourself, learn new skills, and move through this part of your life with grace because that's going to give you the strength to be able to handle this. This is saying like, don't be destructive and, and hard headed like a goat, which I mean, kind of funny Capricorn, you're like half goat, half fish. So to me, this is like, you have the ability to either be hard headed or go with the flow. And it's up to you to decide how you want to handle that. That's why it's reversed. Also, another message for some of you, not all of you, not all of you is going to resonate with this, but some of you earth signs or you know, I said earth signs, so maybe this is kind of an overarching thing, but for you Capricorn specifically, the fact that this is a queen of earth and this is the king of earth, but reversed is telling me some of you are dealing with a masculine energy or a partnership, a partner or a lack thereof. Um, whether you're a female watching this about a male or a male watching this about a female or however orientation you want to do, I don't care. But the fact this is a counterpart, this is also counterpart energy here coming up for you. The fact that's reversed feels blocked to me. Okay. Whether uh, your counterpart energy is in your life or not, I feel like they're about, they're a bit out in space and I feel like you're having a hard time connecting with them. But what I just heard is as above, so below. So as above, so below. So the more that you become calm, cool, collected, stable, self-assured, and financially chilled the F out, <laughs> like financially getting your shit together, the more that this counterpart will be able to come into your life. But right now it's like there, the, there's a mirroring effect happening in your life where 
the more that you are on a frazzled freak out energy or just like nomadic, unstable, kind of all over the place energy with yourself and your finances and your like stability of life, like possibly living situation for some of you. Uh, what, what other things like there's the money, there's the job career, there's living situation. If there are those of you listening to this out there that are feeling detached or unstable in that area, it's, this is the message of the more you can bring yourself into this cool, calm, collected, stable, self-assured energy when it comes to your stability of finances, living situation and career, then it's going to open up for this counter counter energy to come in your partner energy to come in your, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the counter, your counterpart to come in and bless you in your life. Okay, Capricorn, big messages for you. I feel like there's two camps. There's some that are more focused on like a relationship or some of a lot of you, I feel like it has to do with your money and your stability and you'll be able to feel calm and assured on the inside. Some of you, this is like external stuff happening and shifting and changing. Some of you, it's an internal shift, but for you, this is the message is do everything you absolutely can to nurture yourself, to learn and grow, to be able to find that move through these times and of transformation with grace. And that's going to give you the strength to make this happen. And the way that you do it, Capricorn is by getting stable within yourself, getting stable with your money, getting stable with your home, whatever you need to do. If you need to let things go, if you need to get some stuff, if, or if you need to let things go, it's about not relying on anybody else, but figuring it out for yourself, how you can feel cool, calm, collected, and stable in your life. Just like this woman. I love the, her, her whole vibe. If you need to take a screenshot of this and crop it and put it as your phone background to remind yourself of this energy, this goal, this needs to be your goal. Okay. Finding that inner stability and external stability. Okay. All right, now, before we go, I'm going to get you a stone from my lovely, lucky Christmas wish box. Here it is. I'll show you my Christmas wish box full of stones. Let's see what comes out for you. Oh, okay. You have... I believe this is called Imperial Jasper, but it is a multicolored Jasper. And I'll tell you why it's multicolored because it embodies the energetic frequency of all the elements. Okay. Whatever you need it to be, this, this stone becomes, but overall it is still a Jasper, which Jaspers are very earthy grounding and nurturing stones. This, all jaspers are known as the nurturing stones okay which i find funny because the nurture card is right here so that's a double confirmation for you is to nurture yourself nurture your body do what you need to do to become more physically healthy in your mind body and spirit because uh, we all are humans and we all tend to lean heavily into one area or another while neglecting another area so you know the truth of what needs to be worked on and what needs to be healed. So taking action to make that happen. So Imperial Jasper is about embodying your higher sense of self, but in a grounded way. It's literally, a, this stone is the embodiment of what I would consider the Queen of Pentacles to be. It's a stone of heart nurturing, of staying grounded. It's got even yellow in there. So it's about confidence and that self-assuredness, that willpower to be able to get things done for yourself. This is cool, calm, and collected energy. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. Is it focusing? There we go. So it's got 
red, which is the root chakra, green heart chakra, yellow for solar plexus, orange for the orange chakra for creativity, the, that's with your seat of emotion. So maybe some of you need to, to go through some healing right now. I just heard mother healing. So some of you need to heal like a mother wound, some of you, um, or feminine wound. Um, this is also just a stone of great comfort, um, especially in times of change. Okay. The Jasper is when I say nurturing energy, I mean, like, imagine what it feels like to be held in fullness and in, and in completeness. So this is very healing on very many levels. The fact that you got this is, is incredible. I have doubles of stones in that box, but this is the only one of its kind in the entire box. In fact, my entire collection, this is the only stone. So I think it's a very strong message for you to nurture yourself, love yourself, feel, feel what it feels like to take care of yourself, comfort and love yourself the way that you wish you would be comforted by a loved one. You know, you got to do that for yourself first before you can expect anybody else to come in your life and do it for you. You must learn to do it yourself. And this helps with, I just heard, uh, helps with depression people who are feeling depressed, who need a little oomph in feeling a zest for life, um, people who need help with sleep, uh, people who need help with motivation. So it kind of, it will, that's what I mean when I say it embodies whatever it is you need. If you are somebody who's a bit lethargic, it'll help get you up off your, your, up onto your feet, you know, up, up off the couch. If you're somebody who's been go, go, go and uh, have a hard time with sleep, this will help you slow down and take care of yourself and your body. Um, it helps with stabilizing emotions. It helps with stabilizing, uh, I, I just heard you, the chemistry of your body. So anybody going through menopause or um, if you are fem feminine and you have menstruation cycle, this will help uh, ease through that as well. It's a very powerful stone. I feel like it's this stone felt, feels like a seed being planted into the new beginnings of your new life coming up very, very soon, obviously, because we've got like how many uh, transformation cards or ch cards of change? One, two, three, four, and then cards to assist that. Like that's a lot. So earth signs, you guys are going through something pretty big and I'm very proud to be in the great good graces of you so that you can watch this video and absolutely absorb what it is you need to hear and move forward with confidence and grace into the new beginnings of your life okay earth signs thank you so much for watching i really enjoyed doing this type of reading let me know in the comments below if you liked this style if you want me to continue to do the stones i really love doing the stones but you let me know what you like about this reading and I'll keep doing it for you. Okay. All right. I love you so much. Take care. Bye.